Welcome to hour number two on a Friday on Hashtag Daily K with your host, Peter Bing. How much do you know about K food? How much hanshik have you eaten? We invite you into the world of Korean food, of course, including the history and culture of it. We'll introduce trendy foods and famous restaurants on Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan. It's a Friday. We know now that Chef Ryan comes in on this day. And we've had Christmas Eve. And now we've got New Year's Eve together as well. That's, That's right. brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. It's a happy day. It is indeed. We got yeah. a question from Tropic Girls saying, did you survive the crazy Christmas catering? And I'll be ordering for delivery next year. She lives in the Caribbean. So I wonder how far the deliveries go. Wasn't this the sweetest oh, thing? Is that the stitched one? Yeah. She did a different thing for us. Everyone. What a lovely! Thank you very much for this lovely card Indeed. and handwritten note. And yeah, we don't so give cool. enough cards in Korea. I feel still right. There's not that yeah. Christmas card giving culture in the UK. You will have all of your shelves in your house, like above the TV as well. When there used to be big TVs, and you could put a card on top. Plastered in Christmas cards. Does does your family do a Christmas letter every year or anything? <sighs> See, in the UK we would, and I still get some cards from my friends back home, and then I feel terribly guilty. But postage is quite expensive from sure, Korea back sure, home, sure. so I'm not doing it. Do, does your family do it? Uh, every year, <gasps> mom and dad put together a letter, and they put pictures in there and Aww. new news of the family. And, and a lot of our family friends do that, and that's we, we share those. And that's how you get kind of a newsletter. Yeah, you know, it is a you. nice way. I guess the younger generation, because they've got social media, that's how you keep up with each other. But for the mm. older generation, without that, that's kind of the one time a year you let everyone know, this is what happened. It's a great right? excuse to just like keep in touch. Yeah, yeah. what a lovely thing. I wonder how many of our younger listeners send letters, like, regularly. I mean, actual postage stamp letters. That would be an interesting survey. Um, we've got the hashtag Majimagnal, or last day. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are your plans for today, Ryan? Anything, anything special? No catering or anything going on? No, no work today. <laughs> yeah, Christmas was busy, you know, cooking and delivering, <laughs> feast for folks all over the city. But, but today, you know, is just about having a good time. And I got reservations at, a, at one of the new Michelin-starred restaurants for lunch Ooh. on the west side of town. Yeah. What is the, the dish served there? What's their uh, thing? You know, it's, it's really unique. It's uh, called um, uh, Base is Nice, oh. and they're only open for lunch. Wow. Um, but they, they received a Michelin star <gasps> last year, and I want to go check it out. Is it like traditional korean food or fusion no or? it's definitely modern um oh. really really unique uh i don't know that much about it so i better okay. keep my mouth shut i just want to <laughs> just want to it's kind of like when you go see a movie you know you don't want to see too many of the no. previews before oh fantastic you know i just want to go experience what they have to offer so. after this show that's what you're after this do. show going straight over there right, right i'm yeah. gonna tag along <laughs> 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 if I didn't have some weekend recordings, I would love to uh, be a gooseberry there. I did ask the listeners to kind of guess what dish we're going to focus in on today. Because I said, for me, when I was growing up, this was the dish associated with Korea. Now we've got so many other things. And I think younger people might think of dakbokki or ramyeon or something like that. Yeah. But they've been guessing along. Anna Zosa from Vancouver says, my personal favourite is naengmyeon, the cold noodles. Mm. But are you guys doing maybe kimbap, maybe kimchi? Uh, we had from Jackie Wong, rice cakes, mandu, maybe chon, <laughs> maybe chapche. Uh, so some of you are right in some ways sure. as well. Sure. But the the main star for today yeah yeah it's it's totally on the news it mm -hmm. is the the most quintessential korean thing it is uh you want you want to yes reveal kimchi yes yeah and <laughs> and the first thing i gotta say is that if you have a preconceived notion about what kimchi is yeah um open your mind <laughs> uh because you know there are, there's literally thousands oh. of different types of kimchi, yeah. and variations are just infinite and endless. And and it's not just that cabbage, uh, fermented cabbage you've seen mm -hmm. uh, before. Um, I know that they started selling that in mainstream grocery stores in the U.S. 20 years ago. No, oh, wow. and I would buy it and be impressed by it. Um, and and looking back, those were some pretty good fermented kimchi's that were available suddenly about about 20 years ago. Yeah, that's in, pretty in the early, US. isn't it? Before yeah. like this whole BTS craze and Psy and Gangnam style. In right. the U.K., there was a big. Japanese population where I lived and they loved kimchi so much that some 
supermarkets put it in their uh, like refrigerated section. Obviously, yeah. in Koreatown, you could get it for maybe years before that as well. Of course, of course, it, and it's. But the thing I really want to say is, it's not just that. Mm. You know, there's so many kinds, and we want to talk about some of those today, and then also some of the dishes that kimchi is used in. Because yeah. as it changes, as it ferments, it becomes useful in different ways. Absolutely, and it's, it's just a very complex and interesting thing. Yeah, and for the longest time, I hated it. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> you know ask. how fussy I am, right? And so, a British boy, <laughs> right? Despite having my Korean mother, I was like, "Oh, what is that smell?" Yeah. You know. And many of my friends would come over, and if my mum was making the kimchi, they'd be, "What is that odor?" Or did you take familiar. a lunch to school, and you were the kid with the smelly, weird food? I at, did at not school? take it. I hated it so much, like because I was so fussy. I didn't eat vegetables, let alone pickled red vegetables like that. Right. And right. so, until I was in my early 20s i i never ate oh. kimchi regularly and i feel Poor so Peter, you were ashamed of your heritage i was yeah my dad didn't like it very much either you know mm. and nowadays i think the world has fallen in love with kimchi right right, right and i would yeah. say to everyone out there and for me it was the same there are gateway dishes so the dishes that we might talk about today and others that kimchi is used in can be much more easy to kind of settle yourself into oh this nice flavor absolutely yeah and and fresh kimchi one of the less fermented styles is maybe a great way to start mm. and it doesn't take months to make yeah you, know, you can make it overnight so that's good yeah how did kimchi come about because i know in korea from doing this show for a long time like red dishes the chili pepper and spicy stuff is really yeah, associated you know. with korean cooking now mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it hasn't been here forever thanks to the portuguese um you know traveling with all those different ingredients mm. and and different kinds of chilies uh they found a chili that would grow really well in this climate and wow. it stayed here for the last 400 years uh -huh. plus and became a huge part of, of korean cuisine obviously wow yeah mm. so before that Kim, it was kimchi not was here white. at all, right? Kimchi was like sauerkraut. Yes. Right. So there was kimchi in mm -hmm. its different guises before that. Going yeah. back even more than 2,000 years. The first recorded history <gasps> of kimchi wow. is like 57 BC. Oh I my think. goodness. Yeah. Really? Here in Korea? Here in Korea. Because well. right. we had the whole scandal, and we talked about this with David, who does our history dive on a Monday, okay. you know, about China early on in this year, really putting claim to it, saying, you know, it originated oh, from this dish. give me a break. Yeah, we don't like those claims <laughs> whatsoever and so even the non chili pepper version has been around here like ryan said for more than two thousand years right that's I unbelievable mean, water kimchi white kimchi i mean mustard green kimchi onion kimchi i mean cucumber kimchi <laughs> just goes on and on and on and we talk about this every year about november we start to ramp talk up of kimjang right right the making of it and that's to do with Korea's climate, right? Yes. Uh, as, a, as a farmer, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, it's it's tough to grow those cabbages and get them in right at the right time so they're harvested right around early mm. November so they're ready for Kim Jong. Yeah. And, and if you ever go to the big markets in Korea, Kim Jong... Mm season is when all the tourists are at the market and i don't mean i don't mean international tourists i mean people i call them tourists because they're not always at the market okay and so they're block they're 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 blocking all the entrances they're slowing everybody down i'm like ah get out of my way but because they only come to the market once a year yeah uh, and a lot of people do this because you're i mean how many cabbages does your family make if you've have zero zero okay so we've done the recently you can buy the ready pack so you get all the ingredients together and then you just put the sauce on right and then leave right. it to ferment sure, sure doing it from scratch i've heard can be quite a backache i've literally. done it a few times and it is a whole day <laughs> yeah. and yeah and you're in pain the next day for sure for sure <laughs> yeah. and that was just nine cabbages i know okay. plenty of people that do they get their whole family together and they do 50 or a oh, hundred wow. or more yeah sometimes it's a community thing right especially in the more rural places and i love that yeah that's uh. what i i fear though there are lots of modern families now who don't do it at all and uh. I, I say i fear that but on the flip side it's really easy to buy some delicious kimchi now in the supermarket it right? sure is it sure is but I, man i gotta i gotta think that it's ah uh, i 
I wish that we still had that family kimchi if people had mm-hmm. their recipes of their family kimchi. Yeah. Because probably some of the families in Korea would have that same family recipe for hundreds of years. Yeah, and that's what has led to having so many hundreds, if not thousands, of different types of kimchi. Because each family maybe has gone off on little tangents Absolutely. and it tastes very different. Yeah. And my mum in the UK used to make it a lot before it was big in our area of North London. And uh, yeah, she used to sell it to the Japanese families as an alternative to the supermarket versions. They used oh, to love cool. the, the homemade version. And I, I do taste hers, and sometimes one of my cousins makes it, and then the store-bought, and it all tastes so different. Right. Yeah, right, similar, right. but so different. Our listeners are, some of us into it, some of us not so much. Alex saying the diced radish kimchi, for me, is the best. The gakdugi. gakdugi right. That's good, isn't it? With certain dishes as well, like a kalbi jim with gakdugi for me. You have me. to, or sundegook, you <sighs> have to have the gakdugi kongmo, the... the When you when you order the Korean sausage soup, yes, you have to have the uh, liquid from the kaktugi to mm-hmm. pour into it. It's oh. like a very important part of the dish yeah. that you add yourself at the table. That's one thing about Korean restaurants, right? A lot of it is DIY. Maybe you're cooking the meat in front yeah. of you or you're adding these little ingredients and you're thinking, I'm sure I paid for a finished dish, but it's all up to you <laughs> how much you put of what and, and not of the other. Siska saying, I agree with Alex because I'm not into the cabbage kimchi, but I love the radish kimchi. White, yellow, red, love them all. I also love kimchi bokkeumbap, the fried rice, kimchi jjigae, the stew, and kimchi john, the pancakes, especially with pork. Oh, oh yeah. Maybe a premium. We, yeah, yeah. We're, we're <laughs> going to talk about some of those in a bit. Welcome to Arirang Radio. Well, it's massive here in Korea. We need at least one track. There's got to be 20. <laughs> There has to be more. <laughs> uh, we got a photo from Sherry Osborne in Canada. And you say, this is the kimchi that I get at a market near me. The owl's kimchi, it mm. says. Uh, but I'd love to try more types. You'll notice the jar is nearly empty if we see the second photo here. Uh, yeah. Time for me to get some more. I ate a big piece before sending these pictures in because my mouth was watering. That is a very small jar by Korean standards. Yes, for kimchi, that would only right? last a week, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maximum, that. I think. Yeah. Uh, if you're putting it in other dishes as well. I wonder if that bubbled when you opened it. Because mm. that, that's what I really loved about you know, find it in the supermarket for the first time in the the U.S. long time ago. Uh, right when you crack that jar, it bubbled. And and that's what you really want to, when when you make your kimchi and you you let it ferment, you want to wait until it gets to just that right amount of sparkle, of bubble, that pop. And then that tang in the flavor. And obviously people like it at different stages as well, right? Very true. It has different uses at different stages. Yeah, I do like the the fresh version as well, the kodjari, where it's just eaten straight away. I know. And I guess it doesn't have many probiotics then. Very true, but it still tastes great. I've made that for family and friends back in the States when Mm. visiting, because obviously you can't You can't do the long version. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, Lots more praise from you guys for kimchi. Tropic Girl saying, I fell in love with kimchi soup, maybe kimchi gook in 2021. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, the jjigae is a bit more stew-like, maybe a bit thicker. The gook is a bit lighter as well. And maybe more palatable, I guess, for people getting used to kimchi. And Jackie saying, kimchi, yeah, I'm heading to my fridge right now. (laughs) You got a couple of messages as well, Roy? I do, from Anna Zosa. Anna Zosa must know what's up. Uh, because she's mentioning the the big red kimchi mixing bowls that people use here. <laughs> big plastic one. I have a few of them. And I also have the stainless steel. I like using those too. Yeah. Uh, and then also mentions bosam, which is a, an important dish when it comes to kimchi. Ooh. And I think bosam could be mm. the next big dish to go global oh. from Korea. I just always thought since the first time I tried it yeah. that people would love this anywhere in the world. Yeah, I think when you describe it, you know, as kind of that boiled pork, right. maybe it doesn't sound sexy enough. But if you eat it, and with kimchi, oh, you're right, boy. Anna, that combination is maybe one of the best combinations out there. Right, and you have to have like two or three types of kimchi with your bosom. Yes. It's it's part of the course. It is yeah. perfect for today, and maybe we will be getting to it in uh, part three of the show. Uh, James H. says a kimchi grilled cheese is really good. Mm. Kimchi and cheese, and I know we put cheese on a lot of things now here in Korea. 
career. I feel that that's one combination that is accepted by many. Yeah, it's it can be a little strange for me sometimes, but I have seen a few recipes that worked well. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a big fan of brie or camembert, yeah. check this out. Take a, take a leaf, and actually if you had sour kimchi, it might be even better. Oh. But if you can get a thin, lo- large leaf, yeah. and then rinse it off a little bit, then wrap it around a kind of like large cut french fry size piece of brie or camembert. Oh. Wrap it around there, tuck in the edges, and pan fry or deep fry that sucker. Wow. And then cut it, <gasps> and that cheese will kind of ooze out. Yeah. That works together. Oh, that that sounds really amazing. It goes. It goes. <laughs> oh, and it's wow. a neat, neat little fun thing to do for, for friends or holidays. Yeah. You're inspiring me to wrap more things in other ingredients after last week and the <laughs> right, beef around right. the minari. You remember. That cheese sounds brilliant. Uh, Bree saying, I hear that kimchi is good for your gut health. Is that true? Okay, that I love talking about this stuff. The gut biome, we're mm. finding out more and more information of how yeah. the important our gut biome. The bacteria in your stomach talks to your brain and tells you what to eat. Oh, wow, right? yeah. And so if you eat junk food a lot, then the bacteria that live <laughs> in your stomach to process junk food are telling your brain, hey, give me some more of that junk food. Oh, really? And if you eat healthy foods, and yeah, these more and more peer-reviewed studies are coming out all the time about wow. gut biome. So is that like a, a vicious cycle if you eat bad and if you eat good yeah, it's like a virtuous cycle yeah, you'll want to eat more good absolutely oh, yeah. and wow. it can affect so many things that we you know mood uh just like levels of degrees of happiness all these things from what you eat yeah um, I've heard. yeah right yeah. we never thought that before right that what goes into our stomachs could really like chemically affect your totally, moods and emotions totally it's totally unbelievable. Can. So, you know, sauerkraut is up there, um, very similar, but white kimchi or all these different types of kimchi we're talking about today, they, they have very good effects for your, for your gut biome. Yeah, and I think in Korea, we've really cared about probiotics and gut biome for a much longer time than in the West, because when yeah. I came here as a little kid, I'll, I'll name the brand once, but Yakult was so prevalent right. here. The little friendly bacteria yogurt drinks. There were Yakult Ajimas, and there still are these ladies who sell them. And the number of different yogurts and yogurt drinks you can get in the supermarket mm-hmm, here is mm-hmm. crazy. Right, yeah. right. And there yeah. are some luxury ones that cost more than a thousand won per bottle with some pills in there as well. They've got all sorts. I know what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. You got another really message. I do from Brian Coe. It says, my mom and her sisters used to gather and make kimchi at one of their houses in a large circle on the floor <laughs> with all the buckets, salt, <laughs> veggies, etc. They stopped doing it decades ago. But yeah, I know that. I can imagine that picture, everybody sitting around and, and working and chatting and laughing all day long. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's then the, pretty ba- cool. the back aches the next day, yeah. not so good. But it shows the grannies and the aunties and even the mums, their personality. I don't think they complained at all. Like, if it was all the guys doing it, I right. swear, the next day we will be like, <laughs> oh, my back, someone give me a massage. Before we get on to section number three, which I'm really looking forward to today because we've got not one, not two, but three videos for you of kimchi mm-hmm. in different guises. Can we run through like the basics? I know there are many different types, but the basic ingredients that you need to make some kimchi. Well, first of all, if, if you've ever fermented food, you mm. know that there's a, a percentage salt ratio that is uh-huh. important to control the ferment. Okay. If, if it's too light, um, your ferment might go a little in the wrong direction. Okay. The wrong kind of enzymes and bacteria could take over. If it's too light. If okay. it's too light. And if it's too much, too much salt, yeah. then it might just stifle a lot of fermentation. Uh, because it'll salt, kill a lot of bacteria. Right. Okay. Salt would, would slow down the ability for these enzymes to grow. Uh-huh. So normally around um, 3% is about right. Okay. You know, 3% salinity. Right. Um, often... You know, when if you live near the sea yeah. in the day, back in the day in Korea, you would go rinse the cabbage in the water of the uh, ocean. Oh wow! And that Just would help, nature. right? And that would help get that uh, that fermentation started. Oh. Um, but yeah, so you want to take your cabbages and cut them, and then get them into salt water at about a three percent, maybe a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on your. So if you're making that. For the first time, is that say you had a liter of water? Would that be like three grams? Of exactly. Salt? Okay. Exactly. All right. So, or no, thirty grams. Thirty grams. So a thousand. Ah, oh, okay. 
Three percent. And then you wash your cabbage in there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. do you leave it to sit in there for a while or overnight? Okay. Yeah, maybe twenty four hours. Uh huh. And nicely enough, in in Korea, the markets when you go during Kim Jong season, they can actually do that. There's a service; they'll do that for you, <laughs> and then they'll deliver it already brined to your house. Yes. And you do the rest of the bits. Yeah. Right? So that's not essential. You're still making your kimchi if you're not very doing that true. Part, right. Very tr no shame in having them <laughs> salt it for you. And then the really important part is the sauce the marinade right absolutely and this is where you get a lot of variation <laughs> but uh but you know these days you've got to have garlic you've got to have something to make it all kind of stick together do you mm -hmm. know what that is no rice flour or oh, glutinous rice flour okay right so finely ground ri rice mm -hmm. um there's going to be plenty of onion ground I uh, already mentioned garlic, probably a little bit of ginger. Mm -hmm. Some folks use a lot of ginger. Some folks use <laughs> none at all. Oh. Um, some kind of fish sauce. Okay. And and if you get really wild, like I love making the strange ones. I'll, I'll use <laughs> oysters, like raw. Put it blew my there. mind the first time I put oysters in a ferment yeah. and left it on my cold winter patio for months <laughs> to the, get good. And it doesn't go bad, right? It doesn't right? go bad. Yeah. Doesn't, I've be... done it with octopus in there, um, squid. Yeah, you name it. Uh, there's so many variations, but yeah, having all, all oysters in there is is quite a common one. I think yeah. I've seen. I I still eat the kimchi. The kimchi tastes delicious, but I just leave the oysters for oh, someone else. Yeah. I love them. I love them. They they turn out really nice, and then with something like a bosom, it's just uh -huh. amazing. But yeah, so and then of course red pepper flakes. Yeah. Unless you're making a white kimchi. Mm -hmm. Um, did I leave anything out? Do you need to put in, there's on this list, maybe sugar or pear? Is that just optional? Yes. So um, I, I'm a big fan of using natural sweeteners. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, ground up pear would be really nice. Uh, but often sugar is added. Um, or more onion can be the sweetener. You okay. Because onions have so much natural sweetness to them, too. More radish can also sweeten it as well. Yeah, the moo that we the have. Moo, the moo, the one, large right? radishes, right. Yeah. And then that's it, right? You can... Ferment it for as long or as little as you like, depending on your taste. Or? Well, um, I, I'll tell you, the first time I made it, I didn't have a kimchi fridge. Uh -huh. I had the regular fridge. Yeah. And a regular fridge, we would keep around three or four degrees mm -hmm. uh, centigrade. Yeah. And that makes kimchi really fast. Okay. And the fridge quick. will <laughs> smell strange. Uh, definitely. You know, you've got a lot of, you know, fish sauce and yep. garlic and everything in there and radish. Um but with a kimchi fridge mm -hmm. uh, held at like one degree yeah. or a half a degree, mm. now you're talking three months and it's in there slowly, slowly fermenting. Oh. And uh, and you don't get those strong smells so much. <laughs> and That's why we have kimchi fridges, right? Exactly. Yeah, they need to be a slightly different temperature. It's not a big difference, but it's a big difference to the kimchi itself. It truly is. And yeah. then you can eat at various intervals and leave the rest to ferment some more and you're just getting different flavors. Just like the hot sauces we make from the farm, mm. you know, I really use the kimchi fridge because it, it it pauses, almost almost stops that fermentation, just keeps it really nice and slow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if you guys don't have a kimchi fridge, don't worry. You can still make it in your regular fridge or if it's cold enough outside, you can leave it out there as well like they did in the olden days, like bury a pot in the, in it. the ground, right? That's it, yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to make sure we get to your video, so why don't we oh, yeah. Yeah. go through these first and then if we've got some more time we can uh, answer some listener questions and show their photos so tee it up for us ryan what are we going to be seeing in the first one well you know when your kimchi starts to ferment a little further mm. it gets a little sour yeah and that is when it becomes very useful for a few dishes and this first one is that way it's the kimchi john okay. or a pancake yeah and so with flour egg uh, maybe a little bit of baking powder um, and, and mixed in that diced, almost blended sour kimchi mm. with a little bit of that kimchi water yeah. as well because it comes out nice and red. Yes. And then served with a, with a sauce like soy. In this video, I think they even had like kind of a... Kind of a jangachi. Um, it was the onion and the chilies and the garlic Ooh. and the soy and the water and the vinegar yeah. to dip with. And it was just lovely. So this is at uh, Eatery in the Market, is it right? I love Old Town Suwon because we have that... Uh, well, just, just watch. You'll see. All right. Let's yeah. take it away. Here at Suwon, we've got a World Heritage Site, which is Suwon Hwasong Fortress. And we're about to go into the market. This is a great place. Anytime you're in any... In an older area of Korea, you'll find these markets and you'll always be able to find different ways to try kimchi. Come on. Wow. 
Wow. So these are places where you can buy it as a side dish to store at home as well, right? Oh, yeah, and I've tried some of their pa kimchi. It was excellent. Oh, and there's the John. That's it. Just waiting to be eaten. All right. All right. Again, it's used the, uh, the sour kimchi. And then... Oh, it looks so good I don't know on if a you cold could, yeah, day. It's steaming. Yes. It was so hot. And the vibe in the market was awesome. People were so happy and talkative. And it's nice and noisy. Yeah. I like that kind of atmosphere. Is it a bit crunchy on the outside as well? You better believe it. Yes. I wish you could pick up that sound, but uh, <laughs> but it was, a, it was a happy day in the market. Folks and were having a good time. Is that you finishing off on a little bit of makkali there? Well, the you can't end. have pajon or john without a little makkali. Um, and traditionally, when you're making kimchi, you know, somebody makes bolsam mm -hmm. so that you can have uh, makkali and bolsam after all your hard work. On the fields, right? Mm. Yeah. And I, I guess <laughs> the more you have, the less inclined you are to go back and work on the fields. But uh, <laughs> maybe that's the point as well. Who knows? That looked delicious. Yeah. So those are definitely savory pancakes. Don't think of maple syrup and having it for... Well, you could have it for breakfast in Korea, I suppose. Why right? not? But yeah. uh, I wouldn't put maple syrup. <laughs> no, not at all. Video number two, dish number two. Well, right? that was kind of the segue, the balsam. Mm. Um, you know... You, you've got to try this. Um, I'm telling you, this is the next. This should have already gone huge across <laughs> the world, like like the kimbap or like the bokumbap or or bulgogi or the other things that have made it. Mm -hmm. um, you pressure cook or boil pork belly. Yeah. Okay. And when I use my pressure cooker, it's only about uh, well, get it up to max pressure to where it's it's making okay. the. Ch -ch -ch -ch, you oh. know? And then set your timer for thirty to forty minutes. Yeah. Okay. Then turn it off. Open it up. In that water, you'll have maybe a pear, maybe onion, uh, some soy sauce, uh, some chili, some garlic, maybe a bit of ginger, oh. uh, maybe a little cinnamon, maybe a little star anise. You and know? it just kind of makes the meat a bit fragrant, takes away that kind of piggy pork smell. That's it. That's it. And then what you're looking for is when you take the pork out, it's not falling apart, mm. okay, but it's very tender. Mm. So it can be sliced without the fat all falling off. No, you don't want that. Yeah, it needs yeah. to all hold together. And it's served warm, but not really served all that hot. No, right? no, you know, it isn't. Just warm enough, um, you know, to keep it uh, from being hard, right? Because yeah. as the as it would cool down, the fats would kind of solidify. That, um, that's why it's great for delivery as well, because it doesn't have to be piping hot. Right? It's one of the best delivery foods you can get here. L let's check out your second yeah. video, Rai. We still in the market then? No, this is outside, okay. but uh, nearby. Oh, is that the little the mini prawns? The fermented, fermented shrimp, yeah. And it's kept warm here. That's right, cool. yeah. So three different kinds of kimchi with this. There's the white kimchi. There's the mu one, the the one with the it's, radish. It's so important with, with this dish. Mu crunchy, crunchy. crunchy. Oh, it's the best. Oh, and you can buy extra oh, portions. Of the first oh, yeah. I've ever had bolsam was right here in this restaurant about 14 years ago. Wow. And uh, and this is the white kimchi bolsam. Uh, check this out. It's, it's got this other kimchi on top, the steamed pork. And the raw garlic slice, was that on the oh, top yeah, as well? Oh, yeah. Raw garlic You've is got a to must. Have that. Yes. And it's, it's hot. <laughs> it's cold, it's spicy, it's sweet, uh, it's crunchy, it's tender. Just that the it's buchu, everything. Buchu on top a little time. buchu there Happy that's garlic right. chives. Yeah, it's a big mouthful. But you Sorry, gotta again, a, a in really once. noisy restaurant again. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Oh, that, man. That encapsulates it, though. Unfortunately, due to COVID, yeah, we can't encourage you to go and do this. And thank you for doing it, Ryan, despite COVID. But that's what it's about. It's about being out there, having a little muckily, having a little boisterous chat with your friends. That's I it. love it. That's I haven't it. been out like that for so, so oh, long. Oh, Peter. But don't worry. If you're in Korea, Bosam is one of the traditionally popular delivery dishes, right? One place that I go to, they give you this little thin rice cake, duck as well, mm. to, to wrap around it. And then the moo slices. Well, I've not tried that yet. I have that to see that. It's really good. And the raw garlic. Yeah, that's Oyster. Well, that's not no, your favorite. No, no but, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and we've got one last video. We're going to squeeze it in no matter what. And uh, this is kimchi how?
Oh, chige. Again, if it gets sour, if you ask any Korean friend <laughs> what to do with sour kimchi, you make kimchi chige. Yeah. Um, in the culinary world, when you've got something that's sour, you mix it with either a fat or a sweet, something sweet to balance off that sour. Oh. And that's what kimchi chige is all about. Fantastic. Check it out. Let's take a look. And that dish is relatively easy if you've got good kimchi, right? We're if you've got at some. The, uh, World Heritage Site in Suwon, the Suwon Hwasong Fortress. And we're having kimchi chige. Oh, it's in an old school pot as well, isn't I it? I had to go find the oldest kimchi chige restaurant to Korean. check out. What do you do with kimchi when it gets really sour? You make kimchi chige. Because in the culinary world, if you've got something very sour, you can balance that with one of two things. Sugar, something sweet, or fat. And in this case, we've actually got a little bit of both. Oh. Mm. Yeah. You got the pork in there, right? Right, the pork belly, and this one even had some skin on it too, and other nice. pieces of pork. And that, some of the best kimchi chigas I've ever had have that perfect balance between the fat and the sour. Yes. And then a little sweetness too, to just play it all out. What is making it sweet then in there? Uh, it, it would be rice syrup, okay. or, or you could use something like a pear, or uh -huh. honey, or sugar. Yeah, I'm, uh, kimchi and pork, that combination in many different guises. My mum often does like a, a spicy samgyeopsal. So she's put on the marinade with some chili pepper paste, mm. then fries in the kimchi together with ginger. That's essential for me. I don't oh, know why yeah. with the pork as well. And it tastes like heaven in your mouth. Or try making kimchi jjigae with bacon. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. It oh, works. It's got the saltiness in there as well. It adds the smokiness to it, but that fat, again, will balance off that sour kimchi and yum. Okay, yum. everyone is having a kimchi new year, I feel, Ryan. You've inspired us all. Thank you so much for your videos, and we'll see you again next Friday. Happy New Year! Happy New Year, Peter. You can listen to Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan every Friday at 10 a.m. KST on hashtag DailyK.